Greetings, I'm Sahil Jagtiani. And I'm James Setfield. What? Yay, yeah, yay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ten minutes later. So we're not with Metallica, but we are shooting Guitar Gear Gyan today. And in today's episode, we're looking at the Chapman guitars. Oh, yeah. Nice, no? Yep. We've been waiting a long time to get these reviewed. But before that, make sure you press that subscribe button and ring that bell to stay up to date with all our latest videos. In today's episode, we're looking at two models from the Chapman Guitars lineup. Uh, they're two of the most affordable ones. Uh, I've got uh, the ML1 Modern in Midnight Blue. Shantanu's holding the Ghost Fret in Black Blood. They're both version 2 models. Um, they're the newest uh, upgraded versions of the original classics which uh, Rob Chapman has made. Rob Chapman is a famous YouTuber who started his own uh, guitar company along with some friends. He also hosts a popular guitar review show with Lee Anderton uh, called Anderton's TV. And uh, these guitars have been made popular by his name primarily. But uh, the design structure and a lot of the specs, he's put his own uh, thoughts into them and he's made them, uh, you know, something that the modern player would look forward to. But are they really worth the hype? And I also want to add that Rob Chapman wanted to get good guitars out at really good rates mm. uh, to the public. And uh, these guitars cost about $4.99 each in the US market. Mm. Uh, but they're a little expensive in India. Mm. And they're here to brighten up your day because Rob Chapman is from Brighton. <laughs> PJ man, terrible, terrible. So it's like... Um... He brightens up the day and then you go to Sunny Guilford and you meet your, his friend Lee Anderton and you buy these guitars. Is Absolutely. That, ah, anyway. Okay, so looking at the specs of these guitars, okay, I was quite impressed when I, when I went on the internet and I did a little bit of research on the guitars. It's, it shows it to be like a high-end uh, Ibanez, high-end Fender style model. Even better, right? Yeah, even better in some circumstances at half the cost, yeah. you know. So at four ninety nine, what do you really get? You get uh, Epiphones. Even Epiphones are about 600 bucks, you know. Sure. Like an okay Epiphone, you know, 600, 700 US dollars. And in India, uh, these guitars are pretty expensive though. They are pretty most, expensive. Most guitars in India are, are expensive, to be honest with you. Yeah. You can't compare international prices with Indian prices because there's a whole host of customs duties as well as IGST, which I just figured out while getting these guitars to India. And it does inflate the price, of course. But um, would, you, would you say after playing them, what's your initial reaction like just by looking at them, uh, you know, playing through them a bit? Uh, what, do you, what do you really think about them? I mean, both the guitars. I think they're very unique guitars. Okay. Um, and, you know, they have some pretty cool features to them. Mm -hmm. uh, like, for example, the necks. Yeah. The necks feel really unique on both of these. Mm. Uh, not your usual, usual explorer type uh, Gibson style necks. Necks, yeah, exactly. I also noticed that the neck is not uh, tapered on either of these two guitars. Yeah. It's like a straight. Uh, it's pretty yeah. constant. Yeah, it's pretty constant. And um, even though it's made in Indonesia, I was quite surprised with the quality of the tuners. I was quite surprised with the fact that, uh, you know, even the fret ends. I mean, they're really well done. Yeah, and they're very well done. Normally, guitars, 
sub 500 don't have such good fret ends to be honest with you you always you know feel a bit of a you know poke from one of the frets especially after the 12th fret going towards the edge but here like all 24 frets are like perfectly done i was quite surprised. and very accessible very very accessible the design that's where i think these guitars shine i think the design itself um you know, because I think Rob Chapman's a guitarist, he's, an, he's a shredder and a blues guy also. His thought process has made uh, this guitar company unique from other guitar companies because it's not just about making money, it's also about delivering on the design aspect, okay? Which is the most popular guitar from uh, the Chapman lineup? Uh, it's the ML1. Uh, so not, not the modern one, no, the, the original one, so yeah. like the Strat copy basically, right? right? I find this design to be quite good, you know, it is. even if, and also the pickups, pretty decent. I yeah. mean, we will check them out. So now what we're going to do is we're going to look at the specs of both these guitars, check out all the details, put it on the bench, go through all the tests. Let's get to it. The Ghost Fret has a straight Guardian headstock. It's got the black Chapman tuners. You've got Rob Chapman signature on this uh, black colored gloss finished headstock. You've got access to your truss rod over here, two uh, string trees. The nuts, a uh, Graftec uh, Tusk XL. This really is good for holding tune. These uh, frets are really large. They're, I, they're jumbo nickel frets. You've got your uh, pearl dot inlays both uh, on the fretboard as well as on the side. The side dots are also pearl, which I thought was a brilliant touch. Um, you've got an ebony fretboard, which looks amazing. Uh, at the 12th fret, you've got this uh, pearl uh, infinity logo, which is a beautiful touch. It basically identifies all the Chapman guitars. Um, something I noticed over here is that on the frets, there's a bit of a white residue. I think this is the glue. Uh, this is something that I think um, they need to uh, be aware of in their QC. Um, I think uh, it slipped by. Uh, I didn't see it on the ML1, but uh, this is something that shouldn't be there on this kind of a guitar. But still, I mean, I've seen worse on other guitars. Now we've got the zero, um, the primordial zero humbuckers on uh, the neck and the bridge. Um, there's a three-way toggle switch over here. You've got a master volume, a master tone with a push-pull option. You've got a hard tail over here, a beautiful looking hard tail piece. Uh, it's got a, thring, a string through option. Um, the maple veneer, I think this is more like a photo finish maple veneer because it looks too good to be true. It's really awesome. It gives it a very regal look. So like the ML1, we've got at the back of the headstock these uh, closed back uh, Chapman guitar tuners, um, 18 to 1 uh, gearing. Again, very responsive, very impressed by them even though they're made in Indonesia. The whole neck is maple. Um, it's got a, a consistent uh, depth to it. Uh, it's a C profile, plays awesomely, satin in feel. Um, where the neck meets the, the body, the heel joint over here is well contoured. Uh, so you get upper fret access. Um, the strap button, again, it's very sturdy, quite impressed by it. The mahogany body is painted at the back in black with a gloss finish. You've got a tummy cut, you've got your string through option over here. All in all, a very well designed guitar. So the nut width on this guitar is 1.69. At the 12th fret, the width is 2.04. Let's check the depth. Very responsive tuners. It says 0 0.83 and at the 12th fret it's 0 0.84. So this is a straight neck. Uh, it's not tapered. Um, from the 1st fret till the 12th fret we've got the same depth. Okay, so let's measure the length of this guitar. 
Keeping in mind that it's an explorer shape, we're going to have to uh, give a little bit more room on this side. Um, so keeping that in mind, that should be sufficient. Yeah, it's about 43 inches. Let's look at the scale length, which is your classic 24.75. So let's check the fret leveling on this guitar. Um, not much rocking happening over there. Okay, let's go down a bit. Just choosing some random points. Not much rocking happening over there. Let's go down even further. Down to the end. Wow, that's pretty good. Um, no fret rocking anywhere. It's been leveled well. Um, let's check the tips. Very nice. The fret ends are pretty smooth. Um, it seems to have been rolled a bit. Very nice. All in all, a very good uh, fretboard job. The neck pickup has a DC resistance of 9.81K ohms. Uh, in split coil option, it gives you a reading of 4.96K ohms. Uh, the bridge pickup in humbucking mode has a DC resistance of 15.53, which is extremely hot. And with a split coil option, it goes to a total of 7.91. So as you can see, uh, the top of the headstock of the ML1 Modern V2 has a straight heritage shape. Um, it's got Rob Chapman signature. Uh, the headstock is, uh, I think, has a gloss finish on the top uh, over here, black in color. Uh, you've got your black uh, colored tuners as well. You've got a couple of string trees. You've got access to the truss rod from the top. You've got a Graftec uh, Tusk XL nut, which really helps keep your strings in tune. Um, these uh, frets are incredible. They are jumbo nickel frets. They're pretty amazing. Um, you've got a black looking ebony fretboard with uh, pearl dot inlays. And as you go down, you can see there's uh, um, the Infinity logo in pearl as well. The side dots on the guitar also are in pearl. So it's a very nice touch from him. Uh, it's got 24 frets um, as we go down. You can see over here there is a, a contour at the heel joint um, on both sides here as well as at the back. It makes uh, you know playing with the upper frets much more easier. You've got a couple of sonorous um, uh, pickups as well, humbucker pickups which are pretty hot. We're going to check the DC resistance out of each of these pickups as well. You've got um, an arm cut over here which is really nice. You know it's really comfortable to play against. I think Rob Chapman really thought about uh, the design of this guitar. Uh, he's really put in a lot of uh, uh, inputs, I think, you know, because it's 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 very very comfortable to play, you know, uh, to play with. You've got a three-way blade uh, selector switch. You've got a master volume. You've got a master tone with a push-pull option. Uh, the black hardware. You've got your hardtail with a string-through option. You can adjust the height of the strings as well as the intonation. You've got a couple of black uh, strap buttons. It's a beautiful looking guitar. So at the back of the headstock here, you can see we've got these uh, Chapman guitars, close back tuners in black. Uh, they're very responsive. Normally, uh, tuners made in Indonesia are not so great. I've played on other guitars made in uh, Indonesia with the tuners made there as well. And they're not a pleasurable experience. But these 18 to 1 uh, gear tuners are very responsive and kudos to Rob for designing such uh, good tuners. Um, the, the neck is a maple neck. It's uh, consistent throughout in terms of its depth. It's a C profile. It's a satin finish. Makes it very, very nice and easy to play with. Um, you've got uh, the neck bolted onto the body over here. Uh, four screws uh, onto the mahogany body, which is painted in black with a gloss finish. You've got your strap buttons, which are very sturdy. You've got uh, another contour over here, which makes it easy for you to access the upper frets. You've got a tummy cut as well. Six holes for the string through option. 
a black plastic plate covering uh, the electronics uh, cavity. All in all, a very well designed guitar. The nut width on this guitar is 1.64 inches. Um, at the 12th fret, it's 2.02. .02. Okay, let's check the neck depth. Very responsive tuners, quite impressed. You say it's 18 to 1 in terms of the ratio. Okay, let's look at the neck width. It's 0 0.76. Let me get deeper in. Yeah, it's about 0 0.8 actually. Inches over there, and at the 12th fret, it's 0.86, so it's a tapered neck. Let's check the length of the body. 40 inches. Scale length, 25.5. Let's look at the fret ends on the ML1 modern. Uh, very nice. I don't see any sharp bits. Uh, there are no fret ends over here that are protruding out. Very smoothly done. Let's have a look at uh, the leveling of the frets. Take some random points. Excellent. Not rocking at all in a bad way. It only, only rocks in a good way. Excellent. Uh, let me go down a bit. Can't find anything over there. Is it closer towards the 12th fret? Nope, these are pretty level. I'm surprised for an Indonesian made guitar. Uh, I've seen quite a few of them. You normally see quite a lot of fret rocking happening, but I can't seem to find any on this. And this is a 24 fret guitar. Let's go down even more over here. Wow, that's pretty awesome. It's, there is no rocking happening. So full marks, 100 on 100. Um, there are no points where the frets were higher than the other frets. So excellent leveling job. The neck pickup has a DC resistance of 10.06k ohms. Uh, this is with the tone and the volume at full. Um, in coil split mode, uh, the reading is 5.08k ohms. The bridge pickup has a DC resistance of 12.02k ohms. Um, in coil split mode, it's 6.09k ohms. Okay, so you saw all the details. Uh, Shantanu, I was quite uh, surprised that even though it doesn't say plec job on the, the frets, they were pretty straight, they're pretty leveled. Yeah. Um, I mean, yeah, there is definitely a setup required, I think, on both the guitars because keep taking into consideration the fact that you are uh, shipping it from Europe to India, there is going to be some uh, movement on the neck, you know, on the truss rod as well. So you're going to need to straighten it out. You need to set it up according to your taste. But um, as a basis, as a foundation for a super modded guitar, I think these two are fantastic also. They are. They're really good. And But the pickups, wow, I was blown away. I mean, this was like 10 and 12K uh, ohms. Uh, and that was like, what, 15 or something like that? More than yeah, 15? Yeah. It was insane. It's it like, was. it's so like loud. It's so like amazing. You know, it's, it's incredible. Very hot pickups. And 9 and 15. So it's not even like uh, uh, close by. It's like such a huge jump. You know, in terms of uh, the winding, it's, it's, it's amazing. So yeah, so what else stands out for you? What are the other standout features on this guitar, on these guitars? Um, I think the guitars look absolutely stunning for one. Yeah, the maple veneer, right? On The on maple the veneer, yeah. I, I think that's one of the uh, main features of the guitar. Correct. And even the binding, they've got a reveal binding over here, which, yeah. which gives the sort of uh, uh, look of it being a maple cap yep. almost. On, on this one, it's also stained. Yeah, wow. Yeah. That's nice. That's a nice touch. It's a nice touch, yeah, exactly. I, 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 love, the, I love the belly cut. I, uh, again, we love, we've already talked about the neck, but we, I really love the neck. Yeah. I, I, I actually don't like gloss finishes on a neck. On a neck. I, I really like them satin finished like this. 
I think it's awesome. And these are not uh, shreddy style thin necks. They are proper C necks, man. They're proper Strat style necks. Um, I found that guitar to be a little bit uncomfortable at times to play, but you're going to find out now. So what Shantanu is going to do is we're going to run both the guitars into Rob Chapman's favorite solid state amp, which is the Boss Katana, of course. We've got the 100 watt uh, Katana with us and uh, Shantanu is going to use all the settings possible on each of the guitars, uh, coil split option, humbucking mode. In the clean uh, playthrough, we're going to be using the clean uh, amp setting along with spring reverb. And we're also going to use the brown full high gain setting with the gain at full and with a bit of delay and obviously with a bit of hall reverb. Let's get to it.
So you've heard both these guitars in all their settings. Leave your thoughts in the comment section below. Okay, Shantanu, is Rob trying to chepo us with these guitars? <laughs> Certainly not. Certainly not? Aisha is not a chepo job, right? Uh, eh? Nope. <laughs> so anyway, um, yeah, um, but at 80,000 it's a lot. It is a lot. In India, uh, these guitars go for 80,000 each. I think uh, they can be brought down. I think Bajao and some of the other retailers should bring down the prices. Yeah, I, mean, I think so too. Even at about 60,000 rupees, it's not a bad uh, guitar, man. Yeah. It's, a, it's a really good guitar to work with. But 80,000, you can get a prestige or something like that. Right? Yep. Almost. Yep. So, yeah, I mean, it's it's overpriced in India. But America, 499? Steel. It's an absolute steal. Absolute steal. Of course, uh, we just don't want to uh, whitewash this as being like... Uh, you know, we're fans of Rob Chapman or something like that. There are parts of the guitar uh, that we would like to see improved. Of course, the ML1 for me is near perfect. It's fantastic. Um, you need to set it up. Um, you know, obviously we're traveling. There is a bit of a U-bow on this. Not too much. Um, I do need to set the action right. It's, it is uh, pretty low, the action, but it needs to be set up properly for each string. Of course, there are setup instructions also provided by the guitar company, so that's useful. Um, there's one thing about the ghost fret. Now, I have no finishing issues at all on my guitar. However, on the ghost fret, I found that somewhere along, uh, I think post 12, somewhere along the 15 and 16, I saw this a little white residue. I don't know if it's glue or if it's something else. Um, uh, but I think, you know, if you are going to nitpick, then yeah, I have to point that out. There are little little bits, you know, finishing things issues on that, but it's not a big deal. I mean, uh, it's not a deal I, breaker, but yeah, something that could be. Improved. I mean, I've seen Epiphones with you know like yeah. <laughs> let's not even. We've go seen there. we've seen uh, you know name brands with uh, awful flaws, yeah, man. Awful really flaws. Flaws. So, do you do you think he's heading in the right direction with these guitars? I certainly think so. And I think in India, if there is a retailer who is willing to bring it in at a good price, I think these guitars will do very well. They'll fly, yeah. They should. Because people do want, you know, classy looking guitars, well, nicely playing guitars. So I think, yeah, all in all, um, Rob Chapman, if you're listening to this, make sure you find a retailer, get your brand to India, make sure that we have access to all your guitars. Hope you enjoyed that episode. Make sure you smash that like button, click the subscribe button and ring that bell to stay up to date with all our latest videos. If you like what we're doing over here, make sure you support us by becoming a patron today. My Patreon link is in the card above. Go there and subscribe right now. Shantanu, me and SSJ Productions are all on social media. Are you on social media? Yes, I am. No, you're not on YouTube, are you? You have to get on YouTube. What is the point of life unless you're on YouTube? True, true, true. So follow us and make sure you harass him about getting onto YouTube. And above all else, keep on rocking. So Shantanu, at midnight tonight, if you're going to see a ghost. And I shall fret when I see one. <laughs> so Shantanu, keeping in mind the color of this guitar, are you going to tonight at midnight see a ghost? Yay, yay! <laughs> Are you constipated? <laughs> <laughs> no, stop laughing. Kiss straight face. Uh. Imagine you're playing a solo. Uh, that's it. <laughs> Keep a straight face, man. You crazy fool. <laughs> okay, ready? So keeping in mind the color of this guitar, at midnight, Shantanu, are you going to see a ghost? Yay, yay! <laughs> He's not dead. <laughs> Headfield. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs>